In lesson two, we want to look at the basics of uh, computability. And we want to uh, take a look at two uh, computational models from opposite ends of the spectrum. One is a finite automata, and uh, the other model is uh, uh, that of a Turing machine. Now, we will see that finite automata are a rather weak model, but have interesting connections to uh, dynamical systems, uh, such as Markov chains or subshifts. Turing machines, on the other hand, are very powerful. In fact, if we accept the Church-Turing thesis, they are as powerful as any computer uh, we could build or think of. And the notion of algorithmic entropy we will be uh, introducing later, uh, graph complexity, will be based on Turing machines. So a finite automaton mathematically is defined as a quintuple M. And this uh, quintuple M consists of uh, five entries, uh, Q, that is a set of states. And since it's a finite automata, it's important that this is finite. Then we have uh, A, that's an alphabet. And uh, without loss of generality, we can also assume that A is finite. So then we have Q, that's an element of capital Q. It's a what is considered the starting state or initial state. Then there's F. F is a subset of Q, and it's called the set of accepting or final states. And then there's delta. So delta plays a spe special role. Uh, delta is a function from Q cross A into the set of states again, and it's called the transition function. So this um, definition, it looks rather abstract, but um, once you uh, write uh, down a, a finite automata in, in a diagram form, it's actually quite easy to see. Uh, how they work. So here I've uh, drawn an automata. The uh, set Q here of uh, states is actually the set 1, 2, 3. And here you can see the states. There's 1, 2, 3. So the states are usually drawn as uh, vertice, vertices with uh, the name of the state inside the vertex. So 1, 2, 3. The initial state is usually designated by um, uh, letting an arrow point into it. So in our case, one would be the initial state. So we would have Q0 is equal to one. The uh, accepting states are often marked by uh, drawing a double circle around the uh, number or name of the state. So in this, uh, uh, automaton, we only have one accepting state, num namely 3. So uh, f would be 3. And uh, the alphabet and the transition function, we can actually read off those pink arrows here. So the idea is that the transition function takes a state, and depending on what uh, the next input bit is, it uh, goes to either the state two here or the uh, state three. So you can see here the alphabet would be zero or one. So that's the info, input alphabet. So A would be the binary alphabet. And the transition function now tells us, okay, if we are in state one and read a zero, right? So remember delta was a fun mapping from Q cross A to Q. So if we have uh, uh, are in state one, read a zero, we uh, go to state two, right? So one, read a zero, we go to state two. Likewise, if we are in state three, read a one, 
we stay in state 3. And uh, we see here that for all possible combinations, state plus input, right, QA, we uh, get to uh, a new state, which is either stay in the same state or transition to a new state. So a finite automaton M accepts a set L uh, of strings over A, so over the alphabet. And in this context, in, in computer science, L is usually called a language. So which uh, strings, or one often says words in this context, over A, does uh, an automaton accept? So let's look at our example automaton from the previous slide. And let's say we're looking at a string over the binary alphabet 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. So we start by reading the first bit of W and start in the first state, the initial state, uh, which in our case is 1. So we read 0 in 1. The transition function tells us we go to state 2. So now in 2, we read the second bit, which is 1. The transition function tells us if we read 1 in state 2, we go to state 3. Now we read the third bit. It's 1 again. The transition function tells us stay in state 3. Fourth bit, well, 0. Transition function tells us to go to state 1. Last bit, read a 1. In state 1, transition function tells us go to state 3. So after reading the last bit of our input string here, we will be in some state, one of the finitely many states of our finite automata. Now we accept the word, so accept if uh, after reading last bit of input, We are in in a state from the set of accepting. So in our case, we saw that we were uh, after reading the last bit, we were in state three, which is the sole uh, accepting state of our uh, automaton. Hence, we accept the word. So this here will be accepted and goes into our language accepted language L. So here's the formal definition uh, of uh, when a finite automaton M accepts a string W. We define the state function for W to be R sub W of zero is just uh, the initial state. So this keeps track, this function keeps track of the states that we pass through by successively reading the bits of W. So rw of 0 is the initial state, q0. And then we say rw of k plus 1. So the next state is just the result of the transition function applying to the current state and reading the next bit. And then we define that m accepts a string w, again of length n, if after reading the n bits of uh, w, now we result in a state that is an accepting state in F. And we say L sub M is the language accepted by M. So it's the set of all strings that uh, are accepted by M. So let's uh, look at a few more examples. So we can easily see now, for instance, that the string 0, 0, 1 is accepted, or the string just 1 is accepted, 1, 1, or uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and so on. So you can see many other strings, not uh, accepted strings, on the other hand, are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and so on. And um, if you look at it long enough, you will, you will see that uh, this automaton accepts exactly the strings that, um, so M accepts 
precisely those strings that end with a one. Right? Because uh, whenever we end in a one, we get into the into the state when when we read another zero after that we get out of the accepting state let's do uh, one more example here's a new automaton two states one and two one is the initial state two is the accepting state um, and again binary alphabet and uh, now we can see which strings are accepted um, well one is accepted clearly, uh, one zero is accepted, zero one however is accepted two, or zero zero one is accepted. On the other hand, not accepted are zero, uh, one one, one one zero, or uh, zero zero zero. And if again, if you look at it long enough, you will see it accepts a accepts precisely the strings strings with an odd number number of ones and in in this in this example you can see uh, these two states symbolize now this is the state in which we have read an even number of ones so far, and this is the state in which we have read an odd number of ones. In a uh, basic computer science, theoretical computer science course, you would now go on and try to characterize the collection of uh, languages that can be accepted or recognized by a finite automaton, and this is usually called uh, the collection of regular languages. And uh, regular languages can be characterized as follows. So the empty set is a regular language. And also for every element or letter in the alphabet, the singleton set containing just that letter is uh, a regular language. So those are kind of the atomic atoms of the uh, regular languages. And uh, then you can build up new languages from them by just by saying that if you have two regular languages, then their union is regular. That's uh, not hard to see. But also their concatenation. The concatenation just meaning that you take all words that you can form by taking one word from A and another word from B, and you just concatenate them. But also, um, the regular languages are closed under the star operation. So that means you take all words that can be formed by concatenating finitely many words from A. You may know this by uh, from reg regular expression search, which is uh, uh, related to this, right? Just taking uh, uh, finitely many words from A and just concatenate them. And then you just uh, say that no other language uh, is regular, and this then defines the uh, collection of regular languages. And uh, once you have this characterization in place, you can then actually show that there are languages which are not regular, and you can actually give uh, examples fairly easily of non-regular languages. So again, those were the examples we did. So the set of all strings that end with a one, or the set of all strings that contain an odd number of ones. Those are regular because we uh, actually wrote down an, an automata recognizing or accepting them. Um, on the other hand, here are two examples of languages that are not regular, namely the set of all strings that start out with zeros and then have are followed by an equal number of ones, or the set of all strings that um, are, are a palindrome. That means you can uh, you get the same thing uh, no matter if you read from left or, or the right. So for instance, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 would be a palindrome. The way you usually show this uh, is uh, by a, uh, an important lemma called the pumping lemma. Um, but um, uh, the, the reason 
Um, so the intuitive reason for those two languages not being uh, uh, regular can be seen in that uh, finite automaton don't have any kind of memory. They have a finite number of states, but you cannot, for this language here, for instance, you would have to read the num first half of the bit, count the number of zeros, store them somehow, right? Uh, and uh, and then uh, uh, see if the uh, second half of this string consists of uh, an equal number of ones. But uh, you would need to, in order to do this, you would have to store or have memory for an arbitrary, uh, for arbitrary long strings. But a finite automata only has a finite memory, right? And it has a, it, that's why it's called a finite automata. Same thing here. You would have first to kind of go through the string, decide where the middle is, and then see is this the same as reading from here and then somehow. So Turing machines. It, we will see that's an easy task for them. They can they can do this easily, but uh, finite automata uh, are just not strong enough to do this.